Ladies and gentlemen, since the first generation of Ryzen processor debuted, it seems AMD have just outdone itself with every subsequent architecture. Zen itself has evolved heavily, of course, over its numerous iterations, and with Zen 4 they focused on clock frequency. IPC gains were quite modest, but this approach seems to be totally the reverse of what the company are doing with Zen 5. From everything that I've been hearing, along with general rumours on the internet, IPC gains are the main focus and clock frequency gains are going to be more modest. In this video then, I want to talk to you guys about some benchmarks that I've received regarding the Ryzen implementation on the AM5 platform, and I also want to give some updates to RDNA 4, specifically the fact that the higher-end GPUs such as uh, N41 have allegedly been cancelled. We're going to get into all of that, of course, after this message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which is inactivated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, there are some caveats that we need to talk about before I get into the benchmarks. I don't want to wait too long to get into the benchmarks, but I will also talk about some general architecture stuff about Zen in just a moment. But I want to focus, first of all, on the benchmarks and performance information. So the first caveat I have... Um, is there is on the AM5 platform. Now, the reason this is quite important is because Turin, which is the server variant, they have a higher power consumption figure, basically. With that said, I do not know the exact state of the tests that were being conducted on AM5. Now, I understand it was a test platform, and I understand it was current engineering samples, but what the settings were, what they did with things like PBO, and so on and so on, along with things like memory speeds, I do not know. With that said, let's have a look at the multi-thread scores, and this is on Cinebench R23. As you can see, these results are rounded. So, for example, if the chip received a score of 16,500 and odd, it would be uh, 17,000 and this is basically just to well make it a little bit harder to pin down where these results came from so 16 cores was 49,000 12 cores were 36,000 8 cores 23,000 and then finally 17,000 for the 6 core variant I was also given a single thread result and I don't want to give the exact number here but basically it was mid to high 2,000 points and I was told by the person who gave me this information that it seems that Zen 5, for the Ryzen platform anyway, is going to offer a larger jump from what we saw with Zen 2 to Zen 3. And that was pretty damn big. For comparison points, you can also see the 7000 series processors and the scores that you have with various chips in that for, again, Cinebench R23. Now, I have run these scores by a couple of other people, and one person who has the Turin scores, they told me that these results do seem pretty accurate. However, with all of this stuff, obviously, we are dealing with leaks, so this information could be wrong. However, the source has been pretty accurate in the past, so I think it's probably within the ballpark. Again, the IPC gains for Zen 5 is supposedly really high. I've heard anything from like 20 to 25%, although the problem, of course, with IPC is it's very difficult to know exactly exactly what is being calculated. First of all, is that multi or is that single thread? Second point, what application? Is that an average across a number of applications? Is it heavy AVX workloads? Is it, you know, what, what is it being tested on? The other problem is IPC sometimes gets conflated and confused with, uh, well, performance. Now, in the case of Zen 5, I don't think we're going to be seeing significant increases in clock frequency for the Ryzen chips. I've heard around 200-ish megahertz. Don't hold me to that because we're not talking about final silicon yet. 
but I don't think we're going to see like 500, 700 megahertz or anything close to that, you know, over what we have with Zen 4. It's probably going to be like 100 at the lower end, maybe the same, but I think 100 is pretty much like the lowest I'd expect. Maybe 300 at the absolute max, but honestly, I think somewhere around 150 to 200 megahertz more then Zen 4 is quite, is quite realistic. So honestly, even if you do include IPC and the clock frequency gain, it wouldn't make a significant difference given the processor is essentially hitting way over 5 gigahertz anyway, even on highly multi-threaded workloads, like what's another 200 megahertz really going to do? Now, to my understanding, these are not the X3D variant results. These are essentially just the vanilla chips, but we do know AMD will release those as well in the in the future and from what i understand the ipc or should i say the performance gains excuse me let me change it again performance gains versus the vanilla chips are going to be roughly in the neighborhood of what we saw with zen 4 to zen 4 x3d so it's going to of course be as always with these things very much application dependent because some applications really love the additional cash some applications just can you know they just don't give a crap but um yeah i am going to be very interested to see what AMD does in terms of the pricing for these chips, honestly. Um, this is not a leak, this is speculative, but I would not be surprised if we saw a price increase. I'm hoping that that is not the case. And of course, it does depend on things like the timing on the market and what in Intel does as well, like whether we see price cuts from Intel, etc, etc. But it's going to be extremely interesting to see exactly how AMD markets these things, because I don't think Intel can compete, at least in the high end. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next couple of years. I've been hearing some very curious things about Zen 6 as well. I don't want to say too much on Zen 6 at the moment because it's so much in flux and I keep hearing so much different information. But it seems at the moment like it's very likely we're going to get... I don't like to use the term heterogeneous because it's not quite what they're doing with Zen, uh, Zen 6 full Ryzen. It seems, however, they may, they may consider the, you know, the Zen 6, um, Zen 6 C cores along with Zen 6, but I wouldn't put too much stock in that at the moment because A, I've only heard that from one source, and B, we're at this kind of very early stage where they could pretty much do anything. I wouldn't be surprised, however, if Zen 6 does increase the core count. By the end of the day, Zen 5 is still going to retain 16 cores, 32 threads. And that's pretty much all they need, to be honest, to compete with Intel at this point. There is just no, you know, even ignoring all of the other challenges they would face from increasing the core count, they just simply do not need to. Because Zen 5 is going to offer such a big performance leap over what they already had. And honestly, most workloads at the moment, if we're talking about games, for example, like how many how many games even address like, what, over 8 cores? I mean, there are some, definitely, and I'm sure you could list some in the comments. Like, actually, I'm curious. Name some games in the comments that you really notice how much multiple uh, cause I think like start uh, start wow I can't speak star citizen is one of them and there are definitely others but yeah when you start to get to like 24 threads 32 threads it the number of games is honestly pretty small and at that point you know single thread workload is obviously very important video editing apps um, you know Adobe Premiere and stuff like that certainly can enjoy more cores but typically speaking you know for the average person, 8, 16 cores is absolutely fine. So it's going to be very interesting, to be honest, what AMD does in terms of the prices, uh, pricing strategy, excuse me, as well as the marketing. Now I want to go over some RDNA 4 stuff. So uh, I'm going to read this actually as notes. Um, so RDNA 4 high end does seem to be likely canned. I've already reported this, of course. L, uh, Kepler L2 or initially uh, did report it himself on Twitter. However, I'd been hearing much the same thing. I was trying to basically get some type of confirmation when Kepler um, reported it. And again, a couple of my other sources have come through and told me that it seems to be true. N43 and 44 are the remaining parts. N41, um, 41, excuse me, and 42 are dead. I've also heard that there was an N40 as well, but I'm not certain about that. But the very least, 41 and 42 are dead. 43 and 44 remain as i just said these will be monolithic which is not surprising as they are absolutely tiny the performance i've heard from one source is less than n21 however that would be the full implementation and remember 
N21 could be used in, let's say, the 6800, the 6800 XT, and of course the 6900 XT. So how that falls exactly, I am not certain yet. And I'm assuming that would be raster performance because RDNA 4 does seem to get new ray tracing tech. I've had multiple sources tell me this now. <sighs> I guess it's probably the AMD v BVH pattern, or at least includes that. Um, we saw that, of course, recently filed. Now, this is where things start to get quite interesting. I've heard RDNA 5 is going to be multi-compute die. Now, this was initially planned for RDNA 4, but it just did not seem to work. There were so many issues. How I think the timeline has um, kind of ended up uh, and again, this could be wrong, but I'm almost, I'm pretty damn positive N41, um, yeah, N41 was initially going to be a multi-compute die, and I think N42, I've spoken about this like a trillion times at this point, but basically there were going to be three compute dies, and they were going to sit on an interposer, and then of, obviously each of those uh, compute dies were going to have things like the ROPs, TMUs, and of course the shaders, and then the uh, interposer it wasn't exactly just an interposer it was basically a base die and that had things like the display engine and obviously that would in turn lead to things like the mcds but anyway it doesn't matter because it's dead for 41 and 42 as well seem canned but n41 and 42 i'd heard was then being considered as a single uh, die a single gcd excuse me so very much like they have n31 so it would be a single larger die albeit um, obviously based on RDNA 4 technology, but then it was completely canned. So N41 and 42 are now dead, but um, N51, for example, that will now be chiplet. I have to say, <laughs> I don't have a huge amount of faith in whether AMD are going to get this working or not, but I've had now multiple sources tell me that is the plan. So what about the release timing? Well, this is where things get quite intriguing. So allegedly one of the reasons, there were several reasons RDNA 4 got canned, but it was basically to do with architectural problems. Um, and if they had continued to try to fix these, basically it would have just meant some issues with future designs. From what, I've, what I'm hearing, Q4 2025 is the earliest we're going to expect RDNA 5 to launch. However, it's very likely it's going to slip. So this is going to be roughly around six quarters after RDNA 4's debut, possibly a little more. Personally, I'm expecting some slippage, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Now, this is not necessarily doom and gloom on AMD's part, because what it could mean is RDNA 4, they sell really cheap, and they kind of have, like, a new Polaris. So we could have, like, um, and again, this is not a leak, this is speculative, but it could have like a Polaris Vega situation, hopefully with uh, slightly better results on the Vega side. Um, so they could have a GPU which is reasonably performant, possibly quite energy efficient, and it's basically a stepping stone to a bigger, more powerful architecture. I will be very interested to see what happens because quite honestly, this would not be in isolation, of course, because, well, we know Blackwell is gonna be out um, RTX 50, uh, at the very least by the time RDNA 4, you know, roughly within the same time window. Battle Mage have already been released as well by Intel. And yeah, it's going to be extremely interesting to see what the, uh, to see how the, how the ground lies after all of that. I'm going to leave you with perhaps one of the odder rumors. Um, so one source told me this, and I've managed to back it up by another one. However, I don't think it's ever going to be released, and that is N36. So allegedly, as the name would imply, it is based on RDNA3. However, it is a much larger die, uh, allegedly around 400 um, square millimeters. But again, I think it was something AMD were testing internally, but I don't think they ever we're planning to release it. I have absolutely no specifications, no performance targets whatsoever, and I frankly do not think that they're ever going to release it. Uh, one source told me that it does exist, or at the very least it was being tested internally, uh, but they are skeptical it's ever going to be released, and another source essentially told me exactly the same thing, but they believe it's actually just been canned entirely. Um, I don't think it's ever going to launch. I think that, you know, these companies, they do this crap all of the time, 
there's probably been a ton of very interesting projects that Sony, Microsoft, AMD, Nvidia, Intel, blah, 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 have all tested just to kind of see what happens and simulate stuff and just get an idea of what can be done but they never have a plan of releasing it. So I think that's what happened with RDNA 3's uh, N36. Oh, and also remember that the number, so for example, like 31 and 32 and so on, they are not exactly the performance tier. Although that does typically kind of happen because they create the high end first. For example, with RDNA 3, N31 is the highest performance tier and let's say 32 is gonna be the lower performance tier. Instead, this is basically more design and tape out and stuff like that, <laughs> which is kind of funny given uh, N33 is well released and N32 is like, at some point, at some point, honestly guys, we're gonna release it. Although they have actually uh, finally teased that we're gonna get the mid-range stuff. So what are my thoughts? I think AMD's CPUs are going to be bonkers. I think they're gonna be very impressive. I think that, um, from what I understand, Chirin is going to have a higher power consumption figure as well, which means that unlike the AM5 platform, which is stuck at the at like 170 watts, um, this is going to be higher, so they can obviously ramp the clock frequencies as well. So I think that uh, Chirin is going to be just really good. Um, I've heard from so many people that he's just really good like it's surpassing expectations and i think ryzen is going to do much the same um i think their apus are going to be excellent it's just high-end mid-range gpus unfortunately we're probably going to be essentially at the mercy of nvidia and one concern i have with that outside of the obvious thing of like you've only got one player in the market for the high end so you know god help us with the pricing but um you may recall, I've already rele uh, leaked some of the specifications of uh, of um, the higher-end Blackwell RTX 50, and it's like, well, <laughs> are they even going to get close to that now? Do they even need to? Because, like, why would they? Like, why? Why would they? Like, they may as well just maximize profits, squeeze the customers as much as possible. Um, so my guess is they're either going to go with lower specifications and make the die smaller, or they're going to just, like, basically not activate even as much of the die as what they initially were, and the specifications of, let's say, the 5090 are going to be nowhere near as high. I would love to be proven wrong. I would love for NVIDIA to go all out just because they could, but, um, yeah. With that said, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, you know what to do. It's YouTube. Leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.